Space.com. How do you hear me? Space.com station. I hear you loud and clear. How are you today? Um, doing great, Rick. Thank you so much uh, uh, for having the time to talk with us from the station today. Um, this is uh, Tarek Malik at Space.com. And to start out with, uh, you know, we heard about the cooling problem that you're working on on the station there. And was hoping to find out what you've heard in the latest from Mission Control and what kind of systems you've had to power down. It seems like you have a, a lot of lights up there. Oh, yeah, the lights are still on on station. You know, it's still, it's, uh, the biggest impact, as you probably heard, was to the payloads and to the experiments. Uh, due to the uh, external loop having a problem, we, the internal loop wasn't getting cooling, so we had to power down a lot of the systems inside space station, some of the modules, some of the forward modules. But most of those were uh, science experiments and payload racks. And, of course, a few items that for redundancy for various systems. Uh, but overall, life up here really hasn't changed that much. Uh, if anything, it's actually gotten a little slower for us just due to the, the fact that uh, some of the science experiments and payloads that we were scheduled to work on, we had to postpone those. Well, one of our readers, Michael Clark, had a question that was the same one that I had for you, and he just wanted to know, you know, how, um, how concerned you were about it. Is it worrying at all to have this kind of a problem? How serious do you think it is? Well, it's a serious problem. Obviously, it's something we have to fix. Uh, it's not something I'm worried about, though. we got some great folks on the ground, and I, and I wouldn't be surprised if they could figure out a way to get this external loop back up and working in the next couple of days. And if they don't, then uh, the possibility exists that uh, we'll have to go out and do a spacewalk to replace the, uh, the pump module and put in the new one. And, of course, as you know, we have many spare parts on board for inside and outside the space station, and we train for these situations over and over again. So uh, all the procedures and everything are in place to take care of this. Now, if you did have to go out on that spacewalk to, uh, to replace uh, the, the pump module, uh, how challenging of, of a task would that be? And, and uh, I guess how comfortable would you have to be with the, the spacesuits, seeing that there was that uh, the helmet leak last, uh, uh, last summer? Yeah, any spacewalk is challenging, obviously, and, and there's risk involved. And uh, this particular uh, mo pump module, R&R, &R, we've practiced it many times in the pool. Uh, I did an ammonia tank change out three years ago on orbit uh, during one of my shuttle missions. This is a, a very similar, a large box, a few bolts. You know, the most, the biggest challenge on this spacewalk, in my opinion, is the uh, large fluid connectors that are connected to the pump module. But, of course, we have a lot of tools if we have problems with those to uh, fix that. As far as the suits go, you know, we have been working that issue for quite a while now. We're going to take the two best suits that we have if we have to do the spacewalk. We have procedures in place that if we do have problems, we'll get back to the airlock ASAP. And uh, so I feel very comfortable doing it. Once the ground gets comfortable with it, we have a lot of faith in, in their decisions. Thanks. Well, we, well, before the, uh, the cooling uh, system uh, problem happened, I know that uh, you were looking forward to the arrival of the Cygnus cargo ship next week. Uh, and I'm wondering if any special requests from you and the crew on, to the ground, maybe holiday treats or, or presents or anything like that? Well, you know, we do get a uh, crew care package. Well, I have a crew care package on there from my family. Uh, I do have some bonus food up there and some additional clothes to get me through the next five or six months. Uh, and there was a t some talk about some fresh fruit, so we look forward to any time we get fresh fruit up here or, or vegetables, uh, it's, a, it's a great treat, so we look forward to that. And, you know, speaking of, of Christmas, uh, one of our readers wanted to know how you do spell celebrate the holidays in space, uh, being away from friends and family uh, like the six of you are. Um, you know, can you give us an idea of what Christmas in space is like, any dinners, New Year's plans, that kind of thing? Yeah, sure. First of all, we have great connectivity with our families back home. You know, we have the uh, we have an IP phone. We have the the ground sets up uh, video conferencing with our families on the holidays. So it's great. You get to see them. You get to participate in the uh, events at home a little bit. Uh, but up here, you know, we do have some Christmas decorations. I think buried somewhere. We'll probably try to pull those out and liven up the place a little bit. And of course, all six of us will get together and we'll have a special meal. Everybody will pull out whatever special foods we have that are appropriate for the holidays, and we'll just have you know spend time together as a crew, as friends, and enjoying good food and good company. Now, of course, folks down here are going to be tracking Santa uh, around the world uh, on on Christmas. I'm wondering if uh, if you think he'll pay a visit to the station, if you've made arrangements for him to pay a visit to your loved ones on, at home. Um, you know, if you're going to keep an eye out for him. 
Well, of course, we'll always keep an eye out for Santa when we're out there hanging out in the cupola. We're always looking for things like that. Uh, I don't know if he can get up this high in order to visit us, but uh, we'll definitely keep an eye out, and we'll, we'll report uh, any sightings back to Mission Control Houston. Hey, well, Rick, I know that uh, you've flown several times before on shuttle missions, but uh, you know, you've been up there for weeks at a time now uh, after your launch in November, and I'm wondering what the, the biggest surprise has been for you so far uh, as you kind of began this, this long stretch. Uh, you know, since I've been here so many times before, there there weren't there wasn't hasn't been any real surprises yet. Um, you know, adapting to the zero G environment, uh, living here on board space station, I'm so familiar with the modules. There's really no surprises. It's great to have my own little place to sleep, even if it's uh, you know a very small closet, if you will. But it's great to have some personal space to hang your things. That's definitely much more comfortable. Uh, but no real surprises. Of course, you know, I'm only about five or six weeks into it, and I've got uh, quite a few more months to go. So we'll see uh, how it goes over the next f five months. Is there any one thing, aside from friends and family, that you're missing the most? Usually when I go on a long trip, I, I forget something. <laughs> yeah, no matter how hard you think about what you're going to need up here, there's always one thing you wish you had, of course. But uh, we're pretty well stocked up here, and I really don't want for much. We have great food. We have a great variety of food. But, of course, probably the biggest thing I miss besides my family is some of my favorite foods. Well, actually, that, that, that dovetails right into a question from one of our readers, Heather Biggs. She wants to know what is your favorite space meal and what is that favorite food that you're, you're craving the most uh, this Christmas? Let's see, my favorite space meal, that, that's, it's kind of interesting because, you know, on a shuttle mission, you're only up here for two weeks, and you almost never eat the same thing twice. Up here, I'm starting to eat the same thing a third and a fourth time now just you know, because of the way the rotation is. Uh, I think my favorite thing is turning out to be the, uh, the steak. It's actually a pretty tasty steak, uh, an irradiated, comes out of an MRE packet, and it's actually pretty tasty. And I guess the thing I'm missing the most back on Earth, oh, probably like pastas and pizza and things like that. Now, you mentioned earlier that you, you had a little bit of free time uh, extra uh, from the, the cooling system uh, issues. I'm wondering how you're spending that free time. We've seen some amazing photos you've been taking uh, of Earth from space. Uh, are you getting any of that uh, uh, into that time? Oh, yeah. We're always on the lookout for some interesting photos. I spend, a, I spend some time in the cupola when I uh, – usually at the end of the day, I'll spend the, you know, 30 minutes to an hour in the cupola just watching the world go round and trying to take some good pictures. Um, you know, mostly what I do in the free time is I'm kind of looking ahead. It's, this is kind of – I look at this as like being flying an airplane. You've got to try to stay ahead of the vehicle. So I'm looking at tomorrow's activities or next week's activities and seeing where I can get ahead here and there. But mostly just enjoying myself, uh, looking out the window in the cupola, calling home and talking to the family and uh, making a few phone calls to friends. Now, I've seen photos uh, of you literally standing on top of the world in, in the cupola uh, and uh, amazing images of – uh, volcanoes and clouds and just, just the, the striking view of space. I'm wondering if there's one so far, if you can pick a favorite site uh, or a moment that, that was just like, wow. Well, I think I've had so many of those. Uh, like I said, on the shuttle missions, you just don't get the time to spend in the windows like I, like I do now. Uh, you know, we've been going over Patagonia, south, so the southern tip of South America, quite a bit, just the way our orbits spin, and that's a that's an incredible area. And every time you look out the window at that place, you find something even more beautiful than last time. Uh, one of the more uh, puzzling things I saw the other day as we we're going over the Andes was uh, looked like some kind of a a valley where an avalanche or something had taken place. I would love to know what was going on down there at that time. So, so many great things we see from up here. Great. Well, we, one of our uh, readers, uh, actually, his name is Naul Quoto, was wondering about the Geminid meteor shower. We saw some photos from the station of Comet Ison lately. Uh, are you hoping to see a shooting star uh, through the window? Yeah, in fact, every once in a while when you're out in the cupola and you got the lights turned down and your eyes are adjusted, you could see a shooting star. They're pretty rare. It takes, uh, takes a lot of patience, obviously, to find one of those. Uh, I think I've seen one or two up here since I've gotten here, but like I said, it takes a lot of patience and a lot of time sitting in the cupola to, to see them. Great. 
Well, Rick, uh, I'm out of time, but thank you so much for having the time to talk to us today from the, the space station, and all the best in Expedition 38 and 39. And all the best in Expedition 38 and 39. Thank you very much. It was great to talk to you.